Good morning everyone. My name is Vijay Gupta and you are watching Biology Classes. So welcome to all of you in this lecture of Biology. Students, in this lecture we will talk about the female reproductive organ of an angiospermic plant that is the gynecium. In my last video, as I described about the male organ of the flower that was androsium and in this lecture I will tell you about the gynecium. So let's start the video and the video is very important for all my 12 student also for my BSc students and also for my students uh, who are preparing for the NEET examination. So first of all it is very important to understand the basic structure of a flower and I will repeat it again. As you know that in an angiospermic plant flower is the reproductive organ and in this flower there are four main parts. The outer one is calyx, next is corolla, the male organ is known as androsium while in the center the female organ is present that is called gynecium. So these are the calyx represented by K, corolla C, androsium A and androsium are the male organ while gynecium is the female organ. In my last video I described about the detailed structure of androsium. In this lecture we will talk about the female part of the uh, flower that is the gynecium. So in angiospermic plant flower is the reproductive organ and in flower gynecium is the female reproductive organ. As you can see in this diagram this is the gynecium and this is the female part of the flower. In the gynecium there are three main parts. The first one is a stigma which is situated at the upper side. Below the stigma a style is present. Uh, in, in the case of uh, Hibiscus rosa sinensis, the china rose, there are the stigma is five lobes. So these are the five lobes in case of uh, hibiscus. Below the stigma style is present and the style is attached to a solid part that is the most important part of the gynecium and the basal part that is known as ovary. This ovary consists of different chambers which are known as locules. As you can see in the TS of the ovary, suppose that it is the TS of the ovary. Inside the ovary, there are different chambers, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And inside the chamber, ovules are present. These are the ovules. These chambers are called locule. And inside the locule, ovules are present. Now, these ovules are attached to the ovary wall with the help of a stalk that is known as placenta. As you can see, this is the TS of ovary. These are the ovule and this stalk through which the ovules are attached to the ovary wall is termed as placenta. So this is the placenta. Now, as you can see in this diagram, this is the ovule and this is the placenta and the ovule is attached to the ovary wall with the help of placenta. So it was the basic structure of gynecium. Let us repeat the name again. Stigma, style, the basal solid part, ovary, inside the ovary, locules or the different chambers are present. Inside the locule, ovules are present and ovules are attached to the ovary wall with the help of placenta. So it is the basic structure of a gynecium. Now, uh, so now I will describe about the gynecium some important points. In angiospermic plant, flower is the reproductive structure. As we know, in angiospermic plants, flower is the reproductive structure in which gynecium is the female organ. As I told you before, gynecium is the female organ of angiospermic plant and its single unit is carpel. This point is very important. Actually, gynecium is the female part. It is also known as pistil and the single unit of gynecium is known as carpel. Suppose that this is the gynecium and this gynecium is made up of three units. One, two and three. One, two, three. And these units are termed as carpel and the ovary which consists of three carpel is termed as tricarpillary ovary. Suppose that the number of carpel is four then maybe the tetracarpillary ovary number of carpel of are five then pentacarpillary. So depending on the number of carpel the ovary is termed as monocarpillary uh, number of locule sorry number of carpel is single when the single carpel is present bicarpillary tricarpillary tetracarpillary pentacarpillary. So this these are the carpels and carpel is the single unit of the ovary. One more thing if the carpels are fused then this type of ovary is known as syncarpus ovary 
the carpels are present in two conditions actually most of the time the carpels are fused with each other when the carpels are fused with each other then this condition of ovary is termed as the syncarpus ovary but if the carpels are free as in ranunculus so when the carpels are free then the ovary terms as apocarpus so there are two conditions of ovary fused carpel free carpel fused carpels the ovary is known as syncarpus while free carpel the ovary is termed as the apocarpus ovary now it was all about the structure of ovary so first point is in angiospermic plant flower is the reproductive structure and gynecium is the female organ and its single unit is known as carpel now the next point is it consists of three main parts as i told you before there are three main parts stigma style and ovary so there are three main parts stigma style and ovary inside the ovary ovules are present so as you can see in this diagram inside the ovary ovules are present and number of the ovule uh, may varies in different kinds of plants ovules are also known as megaspore again an important point for you ovules are also known as megaspores and development of ovules inside the ovary is known as megasporogenesis in my last video as i told you that pollen grains are the male gamut and pollen grains are also terms as microspores and the phenomena through which pollen grains or microspores are produced is termed as microsporogenesis now here you can see male organ was uh, microspore and the female organ megaspore and the formation of megaspore known as known as megasporogenesis so these are the similar terms formation of microspore is microsporogenesis in case of male organ but formation of female organ or megaspore is termed as the megasporogenesis so you should remember both the terms microsporogenesis and megasporogenesis so ovules are also known as megaspores and development of ovule inside the ovary is known as megasporogenesis now these ovules are attached to the ovary wall with the help of placenta as you can see in this diagram these ovules are attached to the ovary wall with the help of a stalk like a structure that is called placenta so with the help of placenta ovules are attached with the ovary wall so it was all about the gynecium now we will discuss about the structure of ovule here you can see a diagram of ovule ls of ovule i will describe all these terms in this video but before that i would uh, like to write some important points related to ovule that will definitely help you to make your notes so now we will discuss about the structure of ovule as you can see in this diagram it is the ls of ovule ls means the longitudinal section of the ovule ovules are present inside the ovary and now we will discuss about the structure of ovule different parts of ovule with the help of this diagram so this is the ls of the ovule the small opening of the ovule this is the small opening of the ovule is known as micropyle so micropyle is the opening of ovule through which the pollen tube will enter inside the ovule so this is the micropyle and the opposite end of the micropyle is known as chalaza so there are two ends or two poles present in the ovule one is the micropylar end while another is the chalaza pole now there are two integuments are present outside of the ovule so these are two integuments or two layers present in the ovule the inner one is inner integument while the outer one is the outer integument now what is the function of these integuments one more thing i would like to tell you uh, suppose that this is an ovule and it consists of a single integument as you can see these are two integuments but, but in this diagram this ovule has a single integument it is the case of a gymnospermic plant some gymnosperms such as cycas pinus consist of ovule and the ovules are unitegmic remind the, remember the term unitegmic means when a single integument is present then this type of ovule is known as unitegmic but in case of angiosperms this is an angiospermic ovule so in case of angiosperm there are two integuments the outer one and the inner one and when the two integuments are present then this type of ovule is termed as bitegmic so the ovules on the basis of integuments the ovules may be of two types unitegmic when a single integument is present as in gymnosperms such as cycas pinus etc now when the two integuments are present uh, in angiospermic plant then this type of ovule is termed as the bitegmic ovule now what is the function of these two integuments 
this ovule convert into seed after fertilization as we all know that seeds are produced inside the angiospermic plant inside the ovary the whole ovary converted into the fruit while all the ovules of the ovary converted into the seeds so in a seed there are two seed coats suppose that it is a seed i made a gram seed and this gram seed consists of two layers the outer brown colored layer is termed as testa while the inner delicate layer is termed as tegmen so in an angiospermic seed there are two seed coats or layers are present the outer one is testa that may be colored and the delicate inner membrane is known as tegmen and both the testa and tegmen are produced by the integuments so the whole the entire ovule is converted into seed while the two integuments converted into the seed coat the outer one is testa while the inner one in tegmen it was the extra knowledge for you so these are two integuments so uh, let us repeat the terms the opening of the ovule is the micropyle the opposite end of the micropyle is chalaza and there are two integuments present at the outside of ovule the outer integument and the inner integument and now the most part of the ovule these are the cellular part it is the cellular part of the ovule and the most part of ovule is known as nucellus don't confuse it is not nucleus it's nucellus so this is the nucellus part nucellar part it is the nucellus a vascular strand as you can see this blue colored strand it's termed as the vascular strand which consists of vascular bundle and these vascular bundles or this vascular strand carries nutrition to the ovule uh, like food material and water may be enters with the help of vascular strand now the junk the stalk as you can see this is the ovule and this is the stalk and this stalk is known as funicle this stalk is known as funicle and the junction of ovule with the funicle is termed as hilum so the stalk of the ovule let us make it made it again this is the ovule and the stalk of the ovule is funicle and the junction and the junction of ovule and funicle is termed as hilum so the junction of funicle and ovule is termed as hilum and the funicle is attached to the placenta this is the placenta this is the ovule this is the funicle so funicle is attached to the placenta and the placenta is attached to the ovary wall so the ovule is attached to the ovary wall with the help of funicle and placenta so this is the placenta this is the funicle so the funicle is the stalk of ovule and the junction point of ovule and funicle is termed as the hilum now the most important part which is situated in the center that is called embryo sac or the female gametophyte the embryo sac or the female gametophyte consists of total eight cells and the, and the names are very important and it is very important to understand the whole chapter to learn all these eight cells because all the topics of this chapter remaining topics of this chapter are totally based on the structure of ovule so it's very important for you you have to be very careful to understand all these things so this is the center part and the center part is termed as the embryo sac this bag like a structure is known as embryo sac or the female gametophyte and this female gametophyte consists of total eight cells as you can see three cells are present at the chalaza pole these are termed as antipodal cell two cells are present in the center these are termed as polar bodies and after just before fertilization both the polar bodies fuse together and to form a secondary nucleus these three cells are present toward the micropyle pole and in which two cells are known as synergids and one a very important cell that is present in the center uh, i made it with red color that is the egg cell so these total eight cells present inside the embryo sac one more important thing that all the cells are haploid in nature means n in number not 2n n in number means having half chromosomes so all the cells are haploid these two polar bodies are haploid and when they fuse together and to form a secondary nucleus then the secondary nucleus would be diploid means of 2n so these are two polar bodies and they will made a secondary nucleus in future just before fertilization so these are total eight cells one more time i will tell you the name three cells present at the chalaza pole are termed as antipodal cells two cells in the center known as polar body cell polar bodies <coughs> sorry and three cells present at the micropyle pole in which two are synergids while one is the is known as egg cell so now i will discuss about some important points related to the structure of ovule 
First one is ovules are also known as megaspores. As I told you before, ovules are known as megaspores and formation of ovule or megaspore inside the ovary is termed as megasporogenesis. And I will discuss this topic megasporogenesis in detail in my next video. So, a small opening of ovule is known as micropyle. Now, all the points were laid with, that, with this diagram. It is very important in uh, biology to understand the diagram and with the help of diagram, you can easily uh, make your notes and that will very helpful in your examination. So, a small opening of ovule is known as micropyle. So, this is the ovule and this is the small opening of the ovule and termed as the micropyle. Chalaza is present at the opposite end of the micropyle. So, this is the micropyle and the opposite end of micropyle consists of chalaza. Next point is most of the part of the ovule is known as nucellus. So, this part, this most of the part is known as nucellus. There are two integuments present in ovule. So, as you can see here, these are two integuments, the inner integument and the outer integument. Both are present in the ovule, surrounds the ovule. The stalk of ovule is known as funicle. This is the ovule and this is the stalk of the ovule and this is known as funicle. And the junction of ovule and funicle is known as hilum. So, this is the ovule, this is the funicle and the junction of funicle and ovule is known as hilum. A vascular strand, a strand enters into the ovule to provide the nutrition. As you can see, this blue colored structure, it is a vascular strand consisting of vascular bundle means xylem and phloem. It provides nutrition to the ovule. Next point is in the center of the ovule. Now the most important thing, it is in the center of the ovule, embryo sac or female gametophyte is present. So in the center of the ovule, embryo sac or the female gametophyte which I made with orange color. So, it is the central part of the ovule known as embryo sac or the female gametophyte is present which consists of total 8 cells and this embryo sac consists of total 8 cells. These cells are 3 cells at the chalaza pole known as antipodal cells. So, 3 cells at the chalaza pole known as antipodal cells. Two cells in the center polar bodies, two cells in the center known as polar bodies and in future these polar bodies will fuse together and to form a diploid secondary nucleus. Now the next three cells, these three cells are present at the micropyle pole. So three cells towards the micropyle pole, one is XL, one is XL and two are synergids. So one is XL and two are synergids. So it was the structure of ovule and I hope all the things are very clear to you. Now one more thing I would like to share with you. Uh, in my diagram section, I made a video related to how to draw, how to draw the structure of ovule. I will provide the link in the description box. You can easily learn how to draw an angiospermic ovule. So it was all about the gynesium. In this video, I told you about the gynesium, about the structure of gynesium, parts of gynesium and especially structure of ovule. And I think uh, all the things are very clear to you. Still, if you want to ask any question, any suggestion, you can ask in the comment section. I will try my best to reply you. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.